Hey guys, welcome. Uh, this will, is the last lecture in Calculus 1. And uh, in this lecture, uh, which was not relevant for your final exam, but anyway, uh, I think it should be relevant for your other engineering classes. Uh, well, in this lecture, we will be uh, talking about numerical integration and you will see a bunch of rules here such as the trapezoidal rules, um, rectangle rule or Simpson rule. Let me tell you a few things about these rules. So about these integration rules. Well, they're not, uh, for example, there are some integrals who, um, uh, that cannot be computed in, in terms, cannot be expressed exactly in terms of elementary functions. And when we deal with definite integral, we cannot express this uh, as a, uh, a number because we cannot compute the antiderivatives of those functions. Well, this is where the numerical integration comes into play. Well, if we cannot uh, compute uh, the exact value of an integral, maybe we can approximate it. And the way we're going to do this is, well, for example, we're going to approximate this by rectangles. We're going to approximate, uh, uh, approximate this by uh, trapezoidal of trapezoids or by the so-called Simpson rule. So in this lecture, we'll be talking about three uh, numerical integration formulas. All right, so let's get started. And I would like to start with, uh, uh, with the, um, the simplest approximation, I would say, which is the approximation by rectangles. So let's start with the first one. As you can see in the title, uh, we'll be uh, talking about these three rules. Okay, so the first one is the approximation by rectangles. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is the following. So the sum, you have seen the fact that uh, we approximated right the integral and we uh, we uh, you have seen that limiting process when we uh, took those uh, integrals we computed the area of each uh, rectangle uh, and when we sum up all the rectangles we approximate the area under the curve of a fun uh, right and that's exactly what we're going to do here but so the sum of uh, the sum of the areas of uh, all n rectangles, right, um, <clears throat> uh, is an approximation Um, for the area under the curve, just like we uh, we have said uh, in the in a previous lecture. Okay, so let me draw a picture again. But let me do it here. And let let me just say that. Um, we have something like this, right? So this is the curve y equals f of x, right? And now let's just say we have uh, the area under the curve from a to b, right? All right, and now we're trying to approximate this by rectangles, and we're going to do it in the following way. So we're going to do it like this. And again, this will go here. And so on. And we keep going. and so on, right? And the last one would be somewhere, let's say somewhere here. All right, okay. 
So we said in that in this case, we said that, in fact, let me write it with a different color. So we said that, that the integral from A to B of f of x dx, this guy is approximately, and we're going to denote it uh, in this way, by f of, um, as we said, x1 star, right? Delta x plus f of x, f, f of x n star times delta x, right? So we said this, that this is how we are, we are going to approximate these by rectangles. Well, I, it's an approximation. I wouldn't say it's the best approximation, but it is uh, an approximation. And now, so this is what we call the uh, rectangle rule, if you want to call it like this. But now we can do something uh, a little bit better. You see, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to not just going to draw the rectangles. Um, maybe I should draw something um, maybe I should refine this a bit in the sense that uh, maybe I should look for some trapezoids uh, that will approximate the better that curve over there, right? Instead of drawing the entire rectangle, so maybe I should just draw a line so that I'll have a tra trapezoid. So that's what we're going to do. So the second rule is what we call the trapezoid rule. So second So this is what we call trapezoidal rule. And you will see what this is um, all about. Uh, like I said, it will, the accuracy of, of the approximation will be uh, significant, significantly improved uh, by this rule from the rectangle rule. So let's write this, so the accuracy um, uh, of the of this approximation uh, generally improves. Uh, significant, significant, uh, significantly, uh, if trapezoids are used instead of rectangles. Instead of rectangles. Okay, so let me draw the following picture so that you can see it better. So please remember the picture here for uh, for the rectangle rule. So we try to approximate that curve by rectangles so we can have rectangles, the area under the curve. But now we're gonna do something, we're gonna refine this a bit. And let me just draw a picture so that you can see it better. Um, so let's just say we have a curve that goes like this. So right, uh, and now, okay, look from here to here. What we're going to do is the following, pay attention a bit. So we're gonna approximate this by rectangles. Look at the curve here. So we're gonna approximate by this, no, sorry, by, by trapezoids. Right, as you can see, it goes like this. So I'm trying to approximate the curve by st uh, uh, straight lines as much as I can. And it's going like this. And now you, we will have these trapezoids, almost like rectangles, but not much. As you can see, the error here is much better approximated the curve. And let me just draw uh, one, uh, the area of such trapezoid, let me show it to you in section. So it will look something like this. So it will be uh, something like this. 
So right, this is a right angle trapezoid. And here we will have something, so the distance between here and here, ouch, is nothing else than just delta x, right? So, and the distance from here to here, it will be uh, f of x k, right? Um, and from here to here will be f of x k minus one. Well, as you can see, and that this is a straight line that I'm trying to approximate. And now what we're going to do is to look at the area of this trapezoid. So the area uh, of the, let's say of the case, so this will be the case trapezoid is nothing else than just, if we look at this, let's look at the trapezoid by just the usual trapezoid formula, you know, is the, so you have a base, the first basis, the big basis, the second basis, uh, you add them up, you multiply this by the height, and then you divide everything by two. So this would be equal to um, f of xk plus f of xk minus one times the height, which is delta x, everything divided by two. All right, and then guess what? Since this is only the area of um, um, uh, only the area of uh, of one trapezoid. Now, if we want to approximate the area, the entire area under the graph, so basically we just need to add all this up. So we will have the following. Okay, let me. So the uh, trapezoid rule says that the integral from a to b of f of x dx will be approximated by uh, one half times, and let me write it in this way, f of x naught plus two f of x one plus all the way two f of x n minus one plus f of x n times delta x Every, yes, the, the, this is the rule. So this is what we call the trapezoidal rule, right? Of course, delta x key here, keep in mind that is nothing else than just b minus a over n, right? And xk will be um, a plus k times delta x. Okay, so this is what we call the trapezoidal rule, as you can see, it's approximate, uh, okay, they would call this rectangle rule. And this guy here will be trapezoidal rule. A rule. All right. Um, right. So these are the two uh, the two rules. Well, as you can see clearly, this one will approximate better the integral than the rectangle. All right. Now, uh, the third one that we would like to uh, cover in today's lecture will be Simpson's rule. All right, so now let's see what this is all about. Um, and here is the, the funny thing, the, uh, how should we say, the accuracy uh, of estimated area, right, um, depends on uh, how well uh, the upper boundary uh, of each approximating area uh, 
right? Uh, fits the shape of the given uh, curve. Fits the shape of the given curve. So let me explain what this means, in fact. As you, as you have seen in the first two um, uh, rules, some of them it's better, uh, some uh, the portion of the area, it's better to be uh, expressed by a rectangle. Some others will be better to be expressed by a uh, trapezoid. Um, well, it depends. So let me just uh, draw uh, two pictures at the same time. This is the first one. Uh, let's just say this is the second one. And the first one I would like to um, draw um, a rectangle. So this is the graph of a function. Um, right? And let's just say that in this case, it's better to approximate if you look. You see, approximating by a rectangle. So we have here a rectangle. So this is approximating by a rectangle. Okay, and now in this case, so let's just draw the same graph, basically. Let's just say it goes like this. And um, you see, in this case, say from A to B, you see, in this case, maybe we could, uh, well, draw something like this. Maybe, uh, right? So this will be approximating by a trapezoid. Uh, let me just give me one second. All right. So it goes like this. And let me just say that here. Okay. So the area is approximated by a trapezoid. So approximating by a trapezoid. All right, as you can see, both of them express the area under the curve. Well, it's quite clear in some cases. Well, in this case, if you look, the area is uh, much better expressed by when we approximate by the by a trapezoid, right? All right. Um, well, it provides a better approximation, as you can see in the picture. That's obvious. But the question is, the big question is, well, let me point out this remark. Let's write this remark first, and then we'll ask the question. Uh, clearly. Um, the trapezoid um, provides, let's say, a better approximation um, for the area. or the area under the curve, right? Uh, it's quite clear in the picture. But now the question is, the big question is, how do we achieve greater accuracy? How do we achieve even greater accuracy? So we want to go even further. So how do we achieve this? 
Well, you, uh, this is where the Simpson rule uh, will come into play. And let me just draw a picture first. So keep in mind these two pictures. And now let me draw another one. Right. So let's just say we have something like, uh, so again, we have something like this. This is the graph. And again, All right, so uh, in this case, or for example, if we have something, uh, let's just say we have the graph of a function like this. So how do we approximate beta, right? And we see in, in, in the first case, maybe it's uh, draw to, um, I don't know, we can draw a, 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 um, let's just say, we can draw the line here, right? something like this, and we have a trapezoid, or we can draw a rectangle, right? Anyway, so either way, we would like to, um, this is where the Simpson rule, Simpson rule comes into play. So Sim, this issue is solved by Simpson's rule. And what this is all about, so what does the Simpson rule actually say? So, as you can, as you uh, have seen here, uh, basically, Simpson rule says that we um, involves approximating um, the approximating strip. Let's say has a parabolic arc. For its upper boundary. This is very important. Right. And let's just see what is the procedure for this. So let's talk about the procedure for uh, the Simpson rule, and then we will see some applications. So the procedure is the following. So first, uh, so the first thing we would like to do is that we would like to partition the given interval into a number um, of equal subintervals. And let's just say, uh, let me mention here that this method uh, requires uh, uh, an even number of subdivisions of subdivisions, right? So for example, we can consider let uh, x not x1 all the way up to xn or um, be the subdivision points. Right? Um, with, let's say the starting point x not will be a and the last one xn will be b. Okay, so we have this. Then second, we're gonna pass a parabolic arc, as we as you can see here in the picture. We can so pass a parabolic arc. Anyway, we'll draw a, 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 even a more accurate picture. Pass a parabolic arc through the point. Three at a time. This is important. Uh, 
All right, and when we say this, we're gonna say something like this. So let's just say uh, x not x1, x2, uh, x2, x3, x4, and all the way, let's say, and we keep going, x4, okay, let me just write one more and then we will, x4, x5, x6, and so on. Now, uh, right, so the third thing that we need to do right now, we're gonna calculate the area under each parabolic curve. And this is how we're gonna get the sum. So let's write this, so we calculate um, the area under each parabolic curve. In fact, let me write this this way. Right? So in this way, and then we obtain the sum and um, then obtain the sum. Right? Okay. All right. Now let me draw a picture and I'll be very careful with this picture. So in this picture, we're going to illustrate these three steps that you see here. Right? So these are the main, um, this, these three steps here are the uh, cons uh, are the main procedure of um, how should we apply um, the Simpson rule. Okay, but now let me draw a picture. So I'm going to illustrate through this, and this picture, I'm going to illustrate exactly these uh, three steps. So let me just draw the picture. Okay. I'll draw a big one so that you can guys see it. All right. So let's just say I'm starting from here, x naught. And let me just say, and okay, I'm going to draw all the way to uh, x6. So suppose these are the, the division. So I have here, let's say, x1, then x2. And then here, let's say x3, then x4, x5. As you can see, the distance between x2 and x3 is larger than this. And let's just say we have something like, um, the graph would look like, uh, I don't know, should I put it like this? All right. So this is the graph of f, right? And now, Let me just uh, draw it like this. And let me just draw the others as well. All right, so this is, and now what we're going to do is we would like to uh, pass a parabolic arc through these points three at times. Hmm. So let's just say, let's identify this, this, and this. As you can see, so I'm going to draw a parabolic arc uh, three at times. Let me draw it like something like this. Um, that will go through, ouch, three points, ah, shoot. Let me just, um, no, okay, maybe the my drawing will not be the best one, but um, I'm gonna try my best to draw a parabolic arc, okay, these three points, right? Um, x1, uh, x0, x1, x2. Then I'm going to draw an, uh, another parabolic arc from x2, x3, x4. I'm going to draw uh, maybe 
No, maybe this is not the best way. Maybe I should draw it like this. Um, maybe let me just modify a bit. Uh, bit here, the situation. All right, let me just say that's something here like this. Okay. Anyway, I wanna, uh, my picture, I want my picture to look perfect. So, okay, it goes like this. Uh, All right, so this is my graph, and now let me draw another parabolic arc. So this would be like this. Like the second one, and now the third one. Um, the third one to be, well, I should have, would be against something like this. Anyway, maybe I should have drawn the second one to be in the other way around the parabolic arc, but anyway. So as you can see here, I have the first pair. Right here I have the second pair, All right? Because we're gonna, we said we're gonna draw the, some pairs of parabolic arcs. And here we're gonna have the third pair. All right, now we're gonna do the following. So the area, we're gonna look at, uh, at the area of uh, under each parabolic curve. So the area under each parabolic curve. And this guy, and now let's see, is what? Well, if we look at this, uh, it will be nothing else than just, if you look at the picture, it will be nothing else than just one third, right? Times f of uh, xk minus two, usually plus f of, uh, f of xk minus one, well, plus four, sorry, f of, uh, uh, plus f of, uh, sorry, sorry, because we said it's no, 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 okay, okay. This is sorry, it's a mistake here. So, this is f of uh, x of 2k minus 2 plus 4f of uh, x 2k minus 1 plus f of x 2k, right, times delta x, right. Because the difference, uh, well, delta x is nothing else than uh, b minus a everything over n. And xk is a plus k times delta x. Well, in this case, now we're going to sum up all these areas. So we're going to have uh, the following formula. Uh, Simpson's formula will say something like this, that the integral, so the area under the curve, which is the sum of all those uh, areas, and this is expressed by the integral, will approximately be, if we factor this one out, so it will be delta x over three times, and we should be careful here, f of x naught plus four f of x one plus two f of x two plus four f of x three, and we keep going like this, plus 4f of xn minus 1. And the last one will be plus f of xn. We just add up all these areas that, uh, the, um, under each parabolic curve. And then we're going to get, we're going to obtain this formula. So this is what we call the Simpson rule. All right.
Now we have three rules. So this is the third rule. So we have the rectangle rule, the trapezoidal rule, and Simpson's rule. So, well, there are plenty of other rules. Uh, and in fact, you can, this is not even the most accurate thing you will find, but anyway, for, for the purpose of a Calc 1 class, I think this, is, this should be enough. If you want uh, something uh, much more in depth than this, then uh, a numerical analysis course will, um, will do its job perfectly. I mean, it will describe even the error terms and, uh, and so on. But now, for the sake of, uh, of our purpose, I just want to uh, do an example. And in this example, we're going to approximate an integral. In fact, we can even compute it. I'm going to take something very simple. Let's just say um, approximate. The, let's say the integral from one to two of one over x dx. So I'm going to take one over x and I'm trying to avoid um, the, uh, zero there. So that's why I don't want to deal with the interval zero one since everything will just blow up and I don't want this. And moreover, I'll be uh, oops, more specific here um, with n equals 10. So I'd like to uh, using rectangle, uh, so the rectangle, rectangles, let's say, basically the rectangle rule, then trapezoid, trapezoids, and the third one is Simpson's rule. All right, so this is the a problem, so let's do it. First of all, we know that So first off, we know that um, that we, as usual, delta x is nothing else than b minus a over n. Well, in general case, in our case, will be so. This would be two minus one over ten, which was one over ten. This is zero point one, and f of x k is one over a plus k times delta x, which is 1 over 1 plus 0 0.1 k. All right, so so with this in, uh, in our mind, let's do it. So the first one, let's see by rectangles. So this is the easiest one. <laughs> it's clear how to, so the, uh, the integral, let's call this i, let me call this i. So the integral i is nothing else, is approximately, sorry, by the rectangle rule. So this is the sum from k equals one to 10 of, if we remember f of x k times delta x k, right? And we know that where delta x k is um, two minus one over 10. So this is uh, one over 10, all right? and xk will be nothing else than just a, so a, uh, um, it's a plus k times delta x, so in our case this would be 1 plus oh, 0.01 um, k, so f of xk will be nothing else than just 1 over oh, 1 plus 0 0.1 k, okay, right, because our function is nothing else than just uh, 1 over x. Now this integral, so I will be approximated by, and now, now let's just, just uh, write this, one over 10 times one over one times one plus one over one times two plus so on, plus one over uh, one times nine plus one over, uh, oh, sorry, what did I, 1.1, 1 .1, sorry. Jeez. Yeah, 1.2. Wait, 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 let me see. Yeah, it's one over 1.1, 1 .1, right? Plus one over 1.2 plus um, one over 1.9 plus one over two, basically. And this would be equal to, if we do this by a calculator, let me see. Uh, so this would be 1.1. Okay. All 
All right, so this would be approximately 0 0.668, all right? Even more 771, okay. So this is, let's keep this value in mind. So this is what happens with the, by uh, using the rectangle rule, which is this guy here, right? So this is how we approximate by rectangles. Now let's see what happens by trapezoids. Um, oh, sorry about that. Trape my trapezoids. Want to see what's going on? So in this case, the integral i is approximately by using the uh, trapezoidal rule. So this would be one half times. Remember f of x naught plus two f of x one plus two f of x uh, nine plus f of x uh, 10 and times delta x. So in our case, by just replacing everything, so this would be one half times one over 1.0, two over 1.1 plus two over 1.2 plus over well, all the way to 2.0 over 1.9 plus the last one will be one half and times delta x, which is 0 0.1. And all this mess here, oh my God. Oh, okay, let me look at the lectures so that I can write them directly without me computing here. Okay, 0 0.693771. Okay, sorry about that. As you can see, we get another value, 69 is there. You've got 0 0.66, 668, 693, oh. And now let's, let's look at the uh, Sim, uh, Simpson rule. So when we approximate this by the Simpson rule, we have the following. So the uh, integral was approximately equal to one third times, let's remember that this is f of x naught plus four f of x one plus uh, two f of x two plus four f of x nine plus the f of x 10 oops, times delta x. So that's the rule. So in our case, this would be one third times one over 1.0, let's say, plus four over 1.1, plus two over 1.2, plus all the way, plus four over 1.9, plus one over 2.0, times 0 0.1. And again, this would be <clears throat> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 0 0.69, Three one five, right? Okay. 0.69315. And in fact, let's see, do we have another three four one five zero two? Okay. And now, so we have three numbers here, as you can see. 0 0.668, 0 0.693, 0 0.69315. Wow, look, it's let's see which one approximates the best because we, that's why I picked this integral because I can compute the exact value. Also, note that the integral from one to two, so my integral i, which is one over x dx, well, this is nothing else than this, um, one over x is, uh, the antiderivative of one over x is the uh, ln of absolute value of x from one to two, which is ln of two minus ln of one, uh, which is ln of two minus zero, but ln of two is approximately something like 0 0.69, um, 31, um, 471, something like this. So uh, let's look at this number and let's see which one approximates the best. See, the Simpson rule has 0 0.69315. 
the exact value is 0 0.69314. As you can see, this guy approximates the best. With greater accuracy, right? As you can see, they're very close with each other. Just look at these two values, right? The exact value and the approximated, uh, the, the, the value that we obtained by applying the Simpson rule, they're very close to each other, right? Okay, all right, guys. Um, I think this sums up the entire course from uh, for, uh, in Calculus 1. Um, well, it was a pleasure for me to, uh, to teach this class uh, over the course of this semester. And um, there are more um, exciting things to come uh, in Calculus 2, where you will learn a lot of things. Uh, you will continue with integration, uh, integration by parts. That will be the first thing that you will do. And so on, you will talk about series, uh, sequences of uh, real numbers and also in Calc 3, you will uh, talk about multivariable uh, calculus. So what we have done in this course was nothing else than just the um, uh, single variable uh, 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 calculus course. That's, that's, this is what it's all about. But you will use this material for other courses uh, as well, not beyond mathematics. You will use it even in physics and so on. So this is a very important thing for you to know. All right, I'll stop here. Thank you very much.